don't know, but it's good. Water becomes water, and she reflects herself and contemplates herself. Till she is water, and finally she is water. And she does not exist as water, but as a composition of W-A-T-E-R, Nalian Wei. Hetch Hetchy is a division of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission and manages the Hetch Hetchy Regional Water System. San Francisco has a rich history going back to the 1760s. The city began to uh, develop uh, the Hetchy Project and in the early 1906, San Francisco experienced a great earthquake. The water system failed in San Francisco. With the approval process moving forward, the city commissioned John Freeman to develop a preliminary design of the Hetch Hetchy Project in 1912. Many people fought against the development, including John Muir. Finally, in June 1913, Hetch Hetchy Grant Act was passed. This today is the Raker Act. But it also allows the city to build Hetch Hetchy Dam. A growing and sophisticated city needs, deserves, and must have a sophisticated water system. Water is life. Water flows through the Earth's veins. Water is mysterious and dangerous. Water transports us to the vast unknown by Jesse Hopkins. Water is pure. Water is natural. Water is healthy. Water can help all. Olivia Taylor. Water is cold. Water is wet. Water is cold and can be a big mess. Water is a teardrop running down your cheek. Alexandra Bree. The number one priority of Hetch Hetchy Water and Power is to deliver high quality water to San Francisco and to the Bay Area Water Users Association. Young community developers of San Francisco travel to Hetch Hetchy to find out exactly where the city's power and water comes from. You saw how big Crystal Springs was. That's 22 billion gallons. And then you compare this to Hetch Hetchy, 117 billion gallons. So you can add up all of our local reservoirs. You can add up Crystal Springs, Pillar Cedos, our East Bay reservoirs, Calaveras. They add up to 66% of the water stored here just in this one reservoir. So this is how important this storage is for meeting our water demand. From snowmelt to tap. The water from the Head Touchy Reservoir is located in a huge granite basin in the Sierra Nevada and is considered to be some of the purest in the nation. With drinking water that leaves the Head Touchy Reservoir enters a tunnel, a granite tunnel like the one we see in front of us. And then it enters into a complex network of tunnels, dams, reservoirs, pipelines, and powerhouses that feed the water by gravity 167 miles across California to San Francisco. The source water from Petrucci Reservoir is so protected that it does not require filtration. 1923 was when this dam was, was oh, first, no, was the first phase of the dam. Yep. Remember, he showed, Margaret showed that picture of how high the dam was at the time. So that top, <laughs> that top area right there was where the dam pipe was before, where the field is. I think it's really incredible how the workers sacrificed back then to be using dynamite and all. Over 100 workers died building this entire Hetch Hetchy water system. I now have a profound respect for this water system. In this world, water acts for nothing, but commands respect. Water brings life to oceans and sustaining rivers, while creating lakes and streams. Water travels the planet, connecting our souls and histories as one seamless movement. Water fundamental, building blocks of life. 
water of life. Anon digs it. They were uh, really they and no one really can say they could experience because we got to do things that not a, not a lot of people can do. We saw the inside of a, a powerhouse in moccasin. This is the new moccasin powerhouse on this side. That's the old. And they said that you probably like the first roots ever go in there. So I thought that was really something we actually got to see how they function. Pretty cool old structure though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. How you doing, man? Good. Good. How about good. Yourself? good. It's a new experience. Like you would never think that your water would come from so far away from San Francisco. 167 miles and three days. Weight at an elevation has potential energy. So there's a four bay at Priest Reservoir up on top of the hill here. Mm -hmm. So you have an impoundment of water there, weight at an elevation. As you drop that water onto the turbine here, you you know, we have about 540 pounds of pressure to run this generator with. So that potential energy is taken from kinetic energy, converted to mechanical energy, which converts into electrical energy. Okay. So uh, that's how a hydro plant operates. And so how much does the water weigh as it's sixty point four pounds per cubic foot. One cubic foot of water is falling a thousand feet equals about seven hundred and forty six horsepower, which equals one megawatt of electricity. So it's moving. It is moving. <laughs> those who have pressurized like rivers uh, inside those pipes that are flowing into the generators here and then giving us the uh, the kinetic energy to create electrical so here's unit two, and it's it's running. So you just you don't just probably can a little bit there, but why don't you just go in and take a look and circle around and come back out and hang out a little bit loud. If it's too loud, I'll get you hearing protection. Texas water and Moccasin's turbines provide clean, sustainable power for Muni, San Francisco's police and fire stations, City Hall, City Street Lights, San Francisco's airport, San Francisco's General Hospital, Recreation and Park, and more. So this is the Moccasin After Bay. This is what she showed you guys on the slide, but this is the last place Can I go to the room? That, yeah. that this water will see daylight. Just be careful. Before it hits Crystal Springs Reservoir on 280 in Redwood City. Okay, this this is called the tail race. And when the water hits the turbine, it drops down. The ability to regulate the elevation of both the fore bay and the after bay for a hydro plant. So it gives them some flexibility on how they operate. So tail race and after bay, there's the gate tower down there on the left hand side that have big gates like this open inside that lake that's letting the water go into the tunnel and the pipeline to San Francisco. And it's already gone through one powerhouse up country at Kirkwood. And then we send it down through tunnels and pipes into Priest. And then it comes down in, into here for the second power generation with the city's drinking water as it heads to the city. And then it has one more, right? No, uh, it has one little low head plant down here, yeah. A small, you're right, a small low head plant. So uh, we're able to generate twice and then deliver this high quality water to San Francisco. Of course, we're very protective of the water supply and protected all the way from the 70s to the day.
So, like I said, you can tell it's just very high quality water. We have real tight controls on the monitoring for water quality and conductivity and turbidity and, uh, you know, uh, it's about as good as, as you can possibly get drinking water for a beach. what the purpose of the plant is, is to expose the water uh, to this UV disinfection and make the water healthier and safer to drink for everybody in the Bay Area. Water enters these 12 pipelines. It's traveling at about one to two feet per second as it moves through all these pipelines, which is somewhat slow. And as it gets about halfway down these pipes, it encounters what is essentially an array of lamps. And, the, and it's designed so that when the water moves through this array of lamps, it's always somehow, some way, it's getting exposed to the light. And that, it's that exposure to the ultraviolet light that effectively gives us the disinfection and the, the kill of various microorganisms that are harmful to humans like Cryptosporidium or Giardia or viruses. So across here, there's 12 large diameter pipes. The, the water, as it crosses the San Joaquin Valley as raw water, it, it comes into this plant, it branches into these 12, and by branching into the 12 pipelines, it allows all of the water to get exposed to a lamp and then it goes into a, uh, one single tunnel for 25 miles as it goes into the Bay Area. And most of our customers don't have an alternative source of water, too. Yeah, the operators here, this is the control room. This is primarily where they monitor the system. And um, it, again, not only um, uh, are there systems here that need to be monitored, but uh, we also have people here that keep track of everything on the way down from Yosemite and as it goes into the Bay Area. Uh, if there's a problem upstream or downstream, we may have to make an adjustment here. Uh, it's another thing we can do here is um, there is some minor amount of um, water treatment that is done um, up country and if, uh, by adjust basically adjusting the pH of the water. And if something goes wrong with that system, which it's very old and it kind of screws up all the time, we have, to, we have to catch it here and make an adjustment. So the operators up country will say, hey, uh, something went wrong, you gotta adjust it down there, and we'll, we'll make some chemical adjustments here to make sure that the, when the water goes through, it's all getting the right treatment. So. Well, it's nice to get away and just enjoy the nature to see how everything is and how it all, how it looks. And I mean, water's important to us, and this is where our water comes from, so it's good to learn where our water comes from, because we, everybody takes their water for granted, and in some countries, people don't even have water, so. Just experience, experiencing this is unreal. I'm just amazed how like they built this and the water, and all that water that comes to San Francisco is all from here. I think those people were very courageous and brave to build this dam. Like it's really crazy looking at how everything came together so well and back in the day they had less tools or their tools weren't as efficient as ours today and I just if I had to build the dam I would I'm not sure I would just I don't know